Hello folks, Patreon.com here. This time around, it's modern. Again, absent company, and at the bottom, but at the top we will have Carlos Ultrasy, the channel fireball list, pretty much with few changes. Uh, or no, in paper it's a bit different, but think this might be the exact version, anyways. Pretty damn close. It was a pity I forgot to click off the cursor. I know you guys might not really welcome this kind of layout, this kind of design for these tapes for recorded playtest matches, but this is what I had to do because uh, there was no way f uh, for me to actually bring Color Soul Drazi to test against this deck, which is awful like, to play uh, online because of so many tricks, so many triggers this is what I had to do my starting hand, forest, a uh, couple lands, but everything is so slow I can definitely do better I have to roll a bunch of mana dorks in a deck and really want to get them going before he gets to kick my face so multi six, uh, this one is again not really that an amazing has some two drops but both are part of the same um, elements of the combo and um, witness doesn't really help even though I have a fetch line here so scries didn't help I think I've put like a land to the bottom or something like that so throwing blind here but this I'm not probably not drawing an overland. Well, at least I decreased the chance. Uh, I might be testing in paper with absent company against Color of Drazi, a teammate of mine who've uh, been playtesting against here. Actually, pretty much completed the deck in paper simply because he had a bunch of those cards before the Pro Tour I don't know exactly how, maybe because he wanted to uh, brew and ended up with actually the best deck in the formats right now his turn one is a mimic off of the Eldrazi Temple so that's kind of brutal. This was first actually tape in Cocker Trees for a while for me, so mind a few large pop up windows at the beginning. With Blue Moon and Blue Red, I actually got accustomed to all those things, though some are actually very hard to remember or almost impossible to click through with a shortcut with hotkeys. Okay, uh, just a turn to bird into another tapped lands, another shock lands. Nothing exciting here, but if I draw like a company or a cord, I'm in a very good shape. Of course, he can dump like a thought knot here, which is actually not. Uh, super uh, crazy right now because I have both an offense and Milari in play and witness is just a filler sort of card right now of course I won't be able to get back whatever he takes away with the witness but um, if I get a cord it's gonna go a long way or a company one of those cards. Path is also nice to have here unless he gets a quick chalice. I believe that's the second temple. Smashes in for two with the mimic, so that's fine. I go down to uh, 17. That's totally fine. I 
I previously thought that I would have like modern championship for my country next month, but it's, it turns out it's in April. Anyways, next weekend I got a big modern open, so that's a fun one. Which uh, I'm glad I had opportunities to play this for. With this tape and some other matchups like against Blue Red Eldrazi, against Blue Man, and against Jessica Kiki, all of that you can either already see on the channel or will see uh, in the next couple of days. Path is kinda annoying here with him already inputting the chalice on one. This kind of stuff, and perhaps their main board, Ratchenbone, may force me to have a Pride Mage main, possibly over second spell sky, so, so to put that one sideboard. Because for them, uh, putting Chalice on two is actually not that easy and probably not a very good play, but it's also possible. Although it shuts down some of their own cards, but not that many. So actually, uh, against Ebbs and Company, Chalice on two is actually pretty good, but it will be a very rare thing that you would see. It will only be there just because they're running out of gas and they have nothing else better to do. But by that uh, uh, time, you're probably close to winning no matter what, and then company cord, and then you get the missing parts. So you don't need to actually cast them. So I get an Anofenzen out, uh, I get a Melira out, get a bolster on the bird. So I add a counter to it, so it becomes a 1 2. <clears throat> so I'm fine actually to block with one of these dudes if ca in case he would have a no big creature coming up for Mimic just yet. Although that's actually very hard to not to expect. Third Temple, so he has six mana for old trussies. Some people advocate Painter's Servant as a way to counter this deck. There is a chance that for uh, Magic Online metagame he might actually want to do that. Simply because right now, as I read last time, they became like, what, 40% of the field online? Which is just bonkers, but I think it's just people Really liking the deck after playing the Gauntlet, really liking it after the Proto, really like such a fresh, cool deck, even though it feels kind of run and worth of bannings. You know, even though if a teammate of mine actually really hopes that I or Temple would get hammered, but I don't think it's gonna happen in the near future. There are not that many modern events coming up. On the other hand, if there would be like, I don't know, four plus decks of Eldrazi in the top eight of the next modern Grand Prix, then maybe it's gonna be alarming enough. But all this stuff just basically get printed in this last edition, in the last sets, and Oath of the Gatewatch, and I don't know, like. It might be too soon. You you may want even uh, you may want players to actually play with those cards before the deck becomes uh, not playable in modern. Despite uh, having this horrible situation, so I don't know. It's going to be a real challenge for wizards. Uh, to find the balance because people bought those cards not for chip and then a very quick ban would make a lot of people happy but at the same time a lot of people also unhappy
and the deck is quite beatable it's not amazing but it does something okay so witness returning back a land I suppose and that's about it bolster for the bird no I thought of oh yeah okay I couldn't I couldn't bolster the bird I had to bolster witness because it was the only one toughness okay get uh oh no I didn't get the land I get back Milara now I can bolster the bird so that Milara traded with one of the mimics Spellsclad doesn't do a whole lot either just yet well Chalice is out there Spellsclad is just a blocker because I can't kill any of his guys anyway you may think that uh, without a prime age post board paths are kinda clunky but sometimes they don't draw chalice and before that you could do something and then it's just a couple cards but things get much better if you let's say have this uh, main deck pride mage over a spell skate over one of them so they're, here, they're just switching places here, not really removing a slot anywhere. Ghost Quarter does nothing right now, but Reality Smasher making you this mimic into a 5 5. That does stuff. That definitely does stuff. I'm at 15, but I don't want to take the heat from both of them. So what I do here is that. Uh, I think I double blocked the actual smasher, the actual 5-5 five five, uh, with Witness plus Milara because on the fence it obviously does more than just the combo so it's better to keep her around but if he doesn't draw into uh, another smasher or a fort seer fort not seer then this mimic is actually not gonna do much. It's gonna be just blocked by an offensive or something, uh, which cannot attack thanks to the spell skite. So I'm just gonna be racing him with a bird, um, which with the next bolster becomes a two three and so and so and. So I tried it at uh, two for one, but he's down to just one card in hand, and uh, his board presence is not really sig uh, that significant uh, but uh, what can I say my draws are better at this point at this point my draws are better yes a smasher off the top could be tough but not that insane it's not that insane um, I'll still be able to block with an offense and then uh, Mimic becomes uh, back to 2 1, etc. Then the cord of the top or something like this with the land so gives a Fin Hunter, etc. So there are ways to stabilize. It's probably his best top deck at this point. Spike Feeder is one part of the combo. Uh, then I thought like to uh, to bolster spike feeder because it's one of the three creatures with a uh, counter, but um, because it's test games, we're allowed to actually take something back and uh, do actually a proper play. And um, while he was doing stuff, I think I changed my mind and. Uh, did the right thing which is put a counter on the bird instead of the feeder that way I can at least attack more or less because uh... huh really that's interesting okay so I'm just trying to think at what point I figured out that 
pumping the bird was actually the correct line. Mimic doesn't really matter, but the spell skip does matter. And then um, also, yeah. So what what why I did this was because um, so yeah. So this we allowed. I didn't take this back. Obviously, I should have put the counter on the bird. But why I did this was because I thought that I could just pay two and. Uh, move a counter from the spike feeder to mil uh, to an offensa, but we figured that was just uh, totally wrong, and the counter would get, uh, go to spellskate. Uh, so he would gladly pay two life to actually uh, interact with me in such a stupid way. So, so that was wrong. For example, that was totally wrong. So we figured that out. I don't play with Spike Feeder Archangel package that often, and also it's not that often that I have to play with Feeder on my side and the Spell Skate on the opposing side. Not a very common board state. He did play Chalice on 2 the turn before. Which is kind of crazy. At this point, basically, I can't cast a bunch of ones, including Paths. I can't cast Seer. But, uh, Company can still get me the combo pieces, and obviously, Cordo Calling gets me combo pieces, so there is that. And uh, with Spike Feeder in play, I just need a land and a cord, basically, and then I win. But uh, there is also a high risk of just drawing all your ones and twos. So yeah, there is a chance that um, Pride Mage might be better as one of the spell skates, so so that you can blow this chalice away. It also gets rid of a ratchet bomb that could be annoying as well. That's a thing too. So I drew a land and uh, that's step one. He was not drawing all that well either. Still have two basics in my deck, so Ghost Quarter does not cut me off lands. Blink Moth Nexus could block the bird, but that's about it. And it's not getting all that bad yet. Draw Kitchen Fink, which I can cast, and then something like a company could hit a Viscera Seer, of which there is still three in the deck, I believe. This is a very combo focused build. Yet, um, a haymaker like Pride Mage could go get to main board instead of sideboard. Other than that, other than Spellskite, I don't see a point of like playing any silver bullets main deck. Uh, also, I'm not a super huge fan of uh, Stony Silence right now because uh, the big point was that not only it fizzles Affinity, it fizzles Tron as well, and Tron is now kind of unplayable. And uh, Kataki is uh, still nice for uh, for Affinity, and then the extra slot could be used for Pontiff, which is normal already in the deck. Then uh, you could secure a slot for cards like Linvala that also does things against Affinity, for example, and also helps you in the sort of mirror matches, for example. Or you could use that slot for to se uh, to secure 
place for your first gender or an extra copy of tight hollow scholar which I do like more than Fods is uh, I'm just not sure what I like more Fods uh, scholar or the uh, sun collector so Barret uh, made 2 damage there because it got pumped after kitchen things so he here he's just attacking for a damage because apparently he didn't draw anything cool I think he was trying the sort of Eldrazi charms over some of the dismembers but I told him very quickly that this is not what we want you to main deck you just want to have those four dismembers so he was trying to question an already like golden and smooth deck list from uh, fireball plus face to face My hand is quite bad, but so is his. And uh, this member is a weapon of choice in this deck, not just because it's colorless uh, and uh, it deals with pretty much anything, but also because it costs three. So you still can cast it with your own chalice in one or two. Like this is one of the factors that I think not many uh, have put into account uh, so I can't cast anything in my hand and that is kinda annoying and that is kind of annoying You may think that, like, okay, if I would have drawn, like, Pride Mage here, I wouldn't be able to cast it. But, uh, Pride Mage off the court or off, uh, company, uh, kills the Chalice in two, and then I can play a bunch of stuff. Or kill Chalice in one, which is probably a better thing to do at this point. I'm at 9, but that doesn't matter, even though he has a Maxis and a Multivolt, but without Smashers or whatnot Seers, he's not really threatening anything, really. Plus, I have the Spike Feeder with 3 counters, so that represents a uh, cushion of uh, Spear 6 lives, so there is that. There is that part. Okay, now I do record. And, uh... I have one extra mana, sort of. But, um... With him having a tapped Nexus... Um... Not only I can tap, like, everything and, uh... Except for a bird and get, uh... So he showed me his hand here, yeah. Nothing that does anything. So get Archangel of Thune, Infinite Life, Infinite Skies, and then just... I can actually kill him uh, this turn with Infinite Bird, because he doesn't have a flying blocker. So there is that. This kind of board stage basically tells you about the power of the deck against Eldrazi Menace. Okay, sideboarding time. Basically voice is good here as a double blocker, so that comes in. Pride Mage comes in against uh, his chalice and ration bomb and whatnot. Uh maybe relic. Maybe like a needle or something. Definitely comes in. Uh then Against his particular build, Pontiff is not that great. It's much better against Blue Red, for example. Glare is my spicy tech. In this matchup, though, I recently read like the thread on Salvation and uh, 
uh, looked at the Magic Online results. So yeah, worsh worship does seems better. So imagine this glare is worship, which I think is more flexible as a card. Full meter comes in for sure. Even obviously not so great here. Revoker doesn't really stop anything. Scoos is just a big body. Uh, nothing super exciting. It's, uh, it's not like a 2 for one like voice, so there is that. And now what to take out. So let's see cards that we need to take out. If we go infinite to life, we don't really need copper, so... Um, infinite life is enough, plus there is Archangel Feeder. Um, Three series may be too much, and uh, two packages and Milara just doesn't do a whole lot, so it's fine to take out those because we definitely need room. Spascat is okay, but maybe two is again too much. Uh, he doesn't have super duper many removal spells, so. It's not like a huge pile of them, like in Jiskai, for example, or Grixis, so matchups where you really want Spellskite, I'm on Fairy Dex, and uh, this is one is, um, uh, Aldrazi is not super unfair, so it's not like Infect or Boggles in the regard that uh, it does not super interactive stuff with Eldrazi, if you can just uh, clean the board then it's not that insane but with Infact and uh, Boggles they got evasion and ways to protect their guys so, but Eldrazi doesn't so that's what I mean by non-interactiveness um, Four chords could be a bit too much so the matchup is about tempo. I'm thinking about cutting one Coco because I'm bringing in some non creatures. I'm not sure. I'm not bringing in that many non creatures, so it'd be fine, but uh, I just didn't know what to cut, and the matchup is really fast. And if you get your hand clogged up with uh, four mana drops. It's not, it's not that great. Matchup is so temporary oriented. And this in hand, um, I have combo pieces. I have voice to stop some aggression. I have voice to stop. Um, first big dude. I have green white to cast whatever. Didn't have black yet, but that's all right. I can cast my hand with the exception of feeder, feeder and it's a blue green. A bit too, uh, a bit sad not to have um, birds of paradise or something, very noble here. But it's not too bad. I'm okay. So I'm definitely starting with a tap chocolate here. I drew a um, green white fetch, so I get access to double green or double or black if I want to. So that's good. So he and <coughs> didn't hit any of the. <coughs> sorry. Any of the <coughs> two mana lands, basically no temples, no eyes. So that's un really unfortunate for him. On the other hand, if he would have just one of them here, um, he wouldn't be able to cast the fours and fives, and the de his deck doesn't really have um, that many frees, so I'm okay here. Voice can trade with a mimic, leave the token behind. If he offers a trade, I'm definitely gonna take it, because. Uh, yeah, especially since he just went to attack just like this without doing anything. So yeah, we know that it 
trades and then I get a elemental token after it <coughs> oh, and then he shows me a gut shot for the token yeah I mean it's not like all that great but uh, I'm not too sad about that so he did the uh, board in it all though I'm not so sure he should have I guess I'm boarding Kozali no matter what I'm boarding the case because there are enough targets that matter uh... yeah he kind of uh... used up two cars to deal with one voice and now he's using a needle in the blind to stop something I think with this board um... I don't know he, he really should have waited on needle um, because, for example, here, I would just drop Township and then cast the things. Because there's really no, no need for me to crack this uh, fetch just yet, because I don't know which land I would want. And now, like... Um, I don't know, if I would drop here Township just like that... Well, it was definitely safe to drop it, uh, because he already laid down the needle. But he should have waited on Needle to go for Township or something else. Or like Spike Feeder. So his play was uh, finally number 3. Uh, land and Reshaper. His kind of voice impersonation. Meaning that it's a 2 for 1. It's cracking a fetch here. Um for Temple Garden actually because I have another fetch if I want to black source but I want like the, uh, a lot of white a lot of green so this is what I did, what I did. and uh, it's good that he doesn't have a chalice here because now I get some value uh, from my path basically pathing away his guy because this way his guy won't actually trigger and he won't get a card or some small drop into play. He will get a land, that's for sure, but that's fine. He'll be able to cast like a Fort not here, but I'm not too uh not gonna be too sad about that. He'll be able uh to take away Quasali from my hand probably. But that's fine. So things corrected for five uh, for free so because of gut shot he went down to fifteen here. Okay. Instead of Seer he got endless one for four. Again no temples, no um no eyes. So it, it's definitely like very sad for him, but the point is that it's not like they're always gonna draw those lands. So of course sometimes they will uh, have a nut draw and draw a bunch of them, and then they'll just dump their hands. But it's not always gonna happen. It's there's eight of them, and uh, if they uh, draw one of them in the early game, uh, that's already quite a manageable speed you can ma uh, manage with because I drew this uh, black green fetch land I fetched the basic over here because mm -hmm. I can still um, verdant for swamp or tomb or shrine or whatever Pride Mage. Uh, I probably should yeah keep money up in case some crap would happen. But I don't know. He has just two cards, and I feel like I can go beat down here. Thinking where to put that counter. Because I can put it 
on any of these three guys on Quasali, Feeder, even the kitchen things. Decide to put it on the Feeder because um, <clears throat> that actually gets me more value. Because um, now, even with Exalted Trigger, uh, well, with Exalted Trigger, I mean, things becomes for free, so trades with uh, Endless One if needed but even if I would put a counter onto it from an offense after Fury came in um, it would still trade with endless one if it would not uh, if it would already have a counter in it then I would make I might I uh, know then I would just simply won't be able to uh, Reallocate a counter. Anyways, if he doesn't block uh, on my next attack, I have the option of um, attacking, keeping mana up, and then maybe using Township or maybe just using 4 mana to move a couple of counters from Theater onto things. So he gets a shaper down and uh, uses Ghost Quarter to kick my township. And I took a swamp for the troubles. I guess he had to, because um, if I do, you would use a township next turn, he would be really in a tough spot. Okay, draw on another voice. Pretty sick, pretty sick. So voice, another bolster laid on this fetch so uh, I can represent double activation from theater. And decided to put a counter into voice. I don't know. There's a chance that I should have um, put it on maybe, I oh know, Quasali. But Quasali would die, so yeah, I guess putting it on voice made a lot of sense. It was really dumb for me not to play that land here, just uh, um, didn't want to apparently represent a bunch of stuff. It's weird, yeah, I should, definitely should have played that land here. Just keeps a lot of my options open. Uh, and um, yeah, basically things bounces back uh, after being blocked <coughs> by the reshaper, and it uh, gets reset because of an offensa. He drew foot knots here. I guess another reason not to put a counter into things. It's a, not a not a simple board, but I should have played the land. Should have played the land. Although that made him play the footnotes here. He maybe had some other options. So footnotes here saw so land. Not something that he wants to really see. And um, basically, yeah, I'm in the driver's seat in this game. There's not a whole lot he can do here. He would need something like a ratchet bomb, but that would be kind of slow before he would get to exploded for it to it won't be too late of course it would be a different game if you would have had uh, faster mana and more of it and um, if you would draw something more relevant than this needle I'm not saying that needle shouldn't be decided in but he sh definitely should have waited on, waited on it because it essentially did nothing. Plus, 
like with Pride Mage I would be able to um, destroy it at any point as as long as I have one untapped mana. Things coming in. He either takes four or no, actually five here or risks basically sacrificing one of his guys and just with zero zero away from the combo here hits Uberborg but that doesn't do a whole lot hits a smasher but this one is too late to the party basically in both of these games he didn't hit like very explosive hands but even if he would I think I stood a chance I think he just shows me another smasher in his hands explaining me that like yeah things could have gotten much more explosive here so there you have it folks I am gonna play tests more against uh, Eldrazi's uh, probably next time on paper I wish I would be able to do that uh, I think I would be uh, anyways I would play test more maybe on Cockatrice as well then this weekend I'll have a big modern open to see how my testing holds and whether the build is correct right now I'm actually on synth collectors over scholars um, because um, scholars is just for big combos and trons there you have it don't forget to subscribe uh, goodbye folks both Bruce signing off